Nick just crashed the drone. That was pretty lucky. Why? It hit something. I just, I'm not quite sure what it hit, but it, um, yeah, it was pretty close to the water's edge. Oh, so it crashed into the, onto the ground. It crashed into a rock. Oh, are the propellers okay? Uh, it's only, look, in all fairness, look, it's just a neck out of, the dr out of that. I was pretty lucky not to lose it. <laughs> They're just scuffed. It's obviously when it hit the rock, it kind of like props were still turning. We we're pretty lucky not to break that, actually. Did you say we were pretty lucky not to break we, that? We, we were pretty lucky not to break that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. We are still in Manly. We spent the night here in this little anchorage. It's called Store Beach. Quite a nice protected anchorage. You do get the wash from the ferries and the other boats going past, but you know, in a catamaran, I have to say, it really makes very little difference. Um, even if there is a little bit of wake or swell coming through, it's it's not a problem at all. So, which is lovely, <laughs> nice change. So we are gonna go ashore today. We're gonna go right behind me, I don't know if you can see, to a place called Quarantine Beach. And it's called Quarantine Beach because there are some old kind of quarantine buildings there. Um, I don't know much about them. I looked up on Google, there wasn't much information. So we're gonna go ashore and um, see what it's all about. The sun has just peeped through the clouds. I think now is a good time to get going. You might remember that Nick and I had already dealt with the Australian quarantine system this year. We spent two weeks in hotel quarantine back in January and now visiting this facility, it gave us a newfound appreciation for just how easy we had it. These buildings were built in the 19th century and every ship arriving in Australia had to submit to a search before being permitted entry. If any trace of disease was found, the people on board were forced into quarantine and the ship was disinfected. As you can imagine, the living conditions of the quarantine facility were pretty average if you're a third class passenger and, well, not too bad if you're an officer or in first class. Jeez, you are right? Yeah, it's nice. It's sort of like my nan's house. <laughs> But first, let's go back a step. Australia's First Nations people called Australia home for 60,000 years before their land was colonised by the British in 1788. And for several decades, Australia remained a penal colony. So in other words, if you broke the law back in Britain, you could be banished to Australia as punishment, which, as beautiful as our country is, seems a bit harsh. The first colony was right here in Sydney, but Australia's a big place, and over time, the colonies spread out, invading the country and displacing the indigenous population. In the early 19th century, Britain opened Australia up to general immigration for those adventurous few who wish for a fresh start. And in 1901, the various colonies amalgamated into one federation and the modern nation of Australia was formed. Immigrants arrived on ships from Europe, at first lured by our mid-19th century gold rush and the prospect of land and jobs. I'm clearly a first-class passenger in this amazing cabin. Whereas I'd be a lowly third-class passenger living off biscuits and weevils. <laughs> so do they have it better or worse than our hotel quarantine? Far worse. We didn't have smallpox or bubonic, bubonic plague. <laughs> Sunday, breakfast, oatmeal, bacon and eggs and scones. Dinner, so bad. roast beef, baked potatoes, cabbage, date pudding with sauce. Tea, cold roast beef with cake. And a corned beef salad for dinner. Plus, there's also butter and jam for breakfast and tea every day, bread for each meal, and toast for breakfast. I think that menu was probably for first class passengers, babe. Oh, yeah, third class just get biscuits with yeah. eagles. This free museum was really well laid out and informative, but it will clearly need a post COVID update. This sentence in particular made me laugh. It's difficult for a generation living in the Western world to fully appreciate the threat of infectious disease. I mean, I take on board their point. COVID aside, infectious diseases are not the death sentence they used to be, thanks to good hygiene and medical advances, particularly vaccines. But then the wording becomes somewhat more ominous. It goes on to say, we have become complacent. Our dominance as a species has led to a sense of invincibility. So I reckon they might have to change some of their signage and their info signs after this last year. Yes. <laughs> Australia is closed. Quite clearly, we are not opening our borders to any of you riffraff. Also, them talking about like how complacent we've become because infectious diseases are no longer a problem. Yes. Like, uh, Toiling okay. comedy moustache. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what are these? It's graffiti. In the same way that if you go to Pompeii, you can see graffiti from like 2,000 years ago. There's also graffiti here from I mean, that one there. 
whatever that was, it's 1918, they dated it. So that's a hundred year old graffiti. That well, one that was over. during the Spanish flu, so they had a big ship full of people who had to quarantine because of the, the yeah. Spanish flu at the time. But she says, look, he says the Niagara. Oh yeah, there you are. Nice is this beach, right? So this beach is only accessible by boat or by a kayak or paddleboard or by swimming or whatever. There is no access from the road, there's no walking trail, there's no other way of getting here. So it's not quite private and untouched, but it's pretty close. And it's just beautiful. Everybody, as you can see, we have beautiful sunny Australian weather. There is blue sky, sun, there's parrots in the air. Um, but no, it's a pretty rainy day today, pretty rainy morning. Um, not complaining at all, pretty happy with the, everything. And there is something truly romantic about being on a boat in a rain shower. We have a few chores this day. We're gonna go and sail the boat. There's a little bit of wind. We're gonna sail around the harbor areas. Um, it, it's huge, it's a huge expanse of water. The rain has passed through, there's a little bit of sun. It's meant to be 15, 20 knots of wind today. I don't see it. We'll see what we can do today, eh? Raise the anchor first or put the main up first? I gotta get the sail bag open. Oh yeah, okay. That's a good first step. A lot easier than on Ruby Rose, hey? Everyone's gonna be like, for God's sakes, all you talk about all season is it's easier than Ruby Rose. It's a catamaran, it's a stable platform. 70, 80% wider than Ruby Rose was, which basically means that we've got like side decks to work around the amount of space i've got here to you know so you can get up on like you can get next to it yeah. exactly get next to it and we're off I don't think we've got much breeze, but hopefully once we get out of the bay, this particular bay, where we are right now, then um, maybe we'll get a little bit more breeze. So we can actually sail the boat. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so we've got a wind angle of 124. We're, we're underway, definitely. So what's our wind speed? 10 knots apparent. From what angle? 110. And we're doing what? Mm, four and a half. Okay. So we're picking up a little bit. Yeah. I have a feeling today is going to really test out our coal rigs. Five and seven, five and seven. Keep a watch at all times and do everything you can to avoid a collision. But, you know, we're on starboard. <laughs> that being said, we're on that starboard. That being said, we're calling starboard on these little <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're going to get my thoughts for the day on sailing a catamaran or sailing this boat. To Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose, we, we, she was delivered in 2012 and we set off in 2015. Now you obviously you know all this, but I guess the thing is that from our point of view, in 2012 the boat was just our, our weekend, we sailed at weekends, we raced at weekends, we went on a week's holiday here and there. Uh, that's okay. As we moved to Liverpool, we just had this kind of creeping weight gain, which I didn't <laughs> Right to. You know, we put more and more things on board and it's they, none of it was big things. It wasn't like we were like sticking like pounds of lead blocks on board. It's little things that just add up. And it was only when we kind of cleared off Ruby Rose at the very end of our season and our time with her 
that we realized how well she actually sailed if she wasn't laid down. Laid and down, sorry. So, you know, I think really what it came down to is a Ruby Rose could have been probably half a ton to a ton lighter to, to get the performance that we, we, we had. And you don't notice the performance dropping off because there's... It's incremental. It is incremental. It's meant to be different on a catamaran, but I guess that my thoughts are today that if this were our first Liverpool boat as a couple, you know, we were going from weekend sailing to this boat as this is what we're going to do. I think we'd, I think we'd fall foul of the same, of the same things. I think we'd be like, we'd do the same stuff. We'd, we'd lay down and down. And, you know, we were talking on our WhatsApp group this morning about cooking. We're, you know, as you know, we're pretty into cooking, but there's a lot of kind of our WhatsApp group who have monoholes saying, oh, well, I want like, an instant. Yeah, what's it called? An Instapot. Instapot yeah. Another one, someone else wants a sous vide. Another person wants a, you know, a Nutri bullet. All these things which are amazing. But it's all these little things, adding five kilos here, adding five kilos there, and all the other bits and bobs. I think, you know, we've even, we're looking to the weight of stuff like bowls and plates, because it does all add up when we were kind of lifting all the stuff off Ruby Rose. But we ended up leaving with five tough crates of, of possessions. And you know, the things like the, the stuff we took out the galley must have been about 60, 70 kilos. I'm pretty attuned to bogging the, not bogging the boat down. Yeah, definitely. I'm happy with this. As a liverboard, if I wanted to race a boat, I probably wouldn't buy this. Well, I... well you can buy a light version of it, but you want, if you want like 30 degrees upwind sailing with your Pino sitting on the rail, you buy a monohull, that's just what you do. Yeah. If you want to live on a boat, full time, I think this is pretty hard to beat. So this is our anchorage, <laughs> and this is Sydney. What a view, right? Pretty nice. There's actually a bay next door as well, just got a boat in it. Okay. There's actually a boys, babe. Oh, that's all cool. boys. Yeah. There might be a little bit of swell because there's ferries and loads of boats going past. So I reckon, you know, this may not be the calmest anchorage that we've ever been in. However, I think it has to be anchorage with the top three views of all time. My ass. <laughs> and then behind that. The reveal. <laughs> coming in a close second. Look at that. And as if that weren't enough, as a bonus, we've got this lovely little beach behind us. And I can see a little staircase, so I think that there's um, a walking trail that goes around the headland here. So, yeah, that'll be nice. We can go ashore, and um, now that we've found our dinghy anchor, by the way, I don't know if I said, but there was an anchor in the dinghy this whole time. We just didn't look properly. But this view, man, jeez. All the lights, mm. can't wait. You know, one of the best things about this, and I can't believe it. About what? Me? Oh, well. well this when you're pointing this, is you to point a camera at me? You know, one of the best things about this, <laughs> it makes me cups of tea. <laughs> is it the boyish good looks and white hot wood? So what is the best thing about this? What, well, one of the best things about this. Well, we still haven't defined what this is. This, this anchorage. Oh, this, the anchorage. The mooring ball. Yes. Free. Yeah. Free. Unbelievable. Yeah, I love. Yeah, nice spot, hey. This has got to be one of the best views in the world to be at for an anchorage. I mean, we've seen some, we've had some amazing views, but this is, yeah. Special. Yeah, it is. <laughs> special. <anyway. laughs> You're not allowed to swear. <laughs> Do you know what? Honestly. What? It just adds, the, the mayhem just adds to the atmosphere. So this is a 
stormy Friday night in Sydney. It's quarter to six. Obviously people are, have knocked off from work and taking their uh, lovely big super yachts out for the evening. Swinging around to change of direction. I know. The wind's already picked up. I'm like being buffeted up here. And looks like it's about to absolutely bucket down. Yeah, that wind has just picked up. It's quite cool. The sky's gone black. Beautiful view though. There's lightning over Sydney. We can hear the thunder along with these party boats next to us. <laughs> Hopefully they'll move on at some point. <laughs> 